Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Power Up Your Access Management with Identity Governance. I'm Shay Mann and I will be your moderator. Today's webinar is in listen-only mode. So if you have any questions throughout the event, go ahead and submit those in the Q&A panel and we'll answer them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. This session will be recorded and we will email you a link to the recorded version tomorrow. Joining us today is SailPoint Senior Security Strategist Mike Kaiser and Identity Strategist, Office of the CTO, David Lee. Mike, David, we're excited to have you here with us today. Um, I will go ahead and pass it over to you to get us started. Thanks, Jay. And thank you for those of you who are joining us on the call today to talk about how you can take your existing access management program and power it up with identity governance. You know, um, in today's environment, uh, we're seeing a lot of headlines. And David, I was looking at some of these headlines just the other day that underscores uh, the security risk that um, faces uh, many of our programs today. I don't know if you saw this headline. There was one that talks about 7.9 billion records. That's billion with a B. With, with a B. With a B that were exposed in 2017. And that, that may be just one, one breach alone, for that matter, the headlines we've seen in the past year. Um, and one example of that is an insider breach at Med Center Health. And this was interesting to me. I was reading about it the other day in my massive spare time, um, and I saw that there were 678,000 individuals whose information was taken. And really what happened was this insider, this person, exfiltrated, took some of the data out of the organization's repository okay. and put it on a CD and just walked out the door. <clears throat> Wait, what's a, what, what, what's a CD? It's like one of those little metal things that looks silver. <laughs> uh, you know, you've heard of those before. It's before streaming. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting, especially with this one, um, because we've talked, or you see a lot of headlines about the insider threat, right? And this one just kind of shows you um, how easy it is to uh, manipulate um, the, the different access that you have inside and, and why, as we kind of go through this, um, we'll kind of stress the importance of having the other side um, of your access management and really that governance. Because really when you look at the details of this one, um, the insider was able to get it because he was able to, on, on multiple occasions, quote unquote, prove that he actually needed access to that, right? Um, which when you really have your policies and your governance system in place, right, you would have policies going against that and not allowing somebody to have, you know, too much access. So, um, you know, this is this is the thing with insider breaches. Um, the the 7.9 billion, though, that's, I want, I want to go back to that because that, that's a lot. It, it does feel like a lot. I think it's, I like quoting that number because it just really underscores the idea of how big what they call the attack surface is. Right. right? It's, it's gotten more and more and more massive just as, as things become more digitized and more things go online and so forth and so on. Yep. All right. And speaking to that, right, um, the, the digital transformation, right, increases the, the threat vectors. And the biggest thing about this is that your corporate network or the corporate network that we all know and love is like the biggest party ever and everybody wants to get access to it, right? You've got partners, you've got customers, you've got suppliers, um, you've, we've now got, you know, IoT and robot identities. You've got all these things um, accessing your corporate network and also from a variety of places. Um, especially within the workforce today. We work from everywhere. We work from home. We work from, uh, you know, the beach. We work from wherever, what times we want to. How sadly, when we're on to. vacation, we're still working. Yeah, yeah, sadly. We're on vacation, we're still working. And so that's, in, that's increased the, um, the footprint of all these places of where somebody can get access. And so with that, the challenges come with that of being able to understand where all your access points are because it only takes one of those access points to fail um, for you to get breached. One guy with an old technology like a CD, one person with specialized access to a, a database you never knew existed, Right. Uh, one guy who had leftover access, there's a whole bunch of use cases, but you're right, it only takes one guy standing, staring into the distance, thinking about what he's going to do <laughs> exactly. uh, to really destroy uh, your infrastructure. As he's contemplating life and this what looks like a graveyard for a plane. Uh, right, right. Yeah, and, this, exactly. and this image underscores that it's not even those systems and those robots and the, the underlying technology. It's that human element where it's really the greatest attack surface, right? Yeah. I, I'm not going to attack 
uh, I'm going to attack your applications, but the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to follow your employees on Facebook. Yeah. I'm going to go online dating and research, whatever. I'm going to, I'm going to use phishing attacks. I'm going to do fake emails, all this to, to get in uh, into their, their mind space and then take over what they know. Exactly. Um, humans have always been uh, the weakest link, right? Because we are, we are the easiest to fool, and the attacks are getting more and more sophisticated, um, especially with the phishing attacks. Right? I, I've, I've just seen it even here at work, right? The emails that you get are very convincing, right? And even the, you know, the, the, the so-called security expert can look at an email, and you'll catch yourself getting ready to click on something because it was uh, targeted to you in an area that you know about or that you research about, right? It had the right email address, right? It was coming from MikeKaiser.TelPoint.com, right? These, these attacks are getting so sophisticated that it's, it's harder and harder for the, uh, the human element uh, to discern those. So um, with that, we need, to, we need to be able to defend against that, right? Knowing that at some point the human element, we're going to mess up, we're humans, we make mistakes, right? So how do you mitigate um, the cost of that once that happens? Right, and you know, the, the first part of that is, is figuring out, you know, what access people have um, and what they have access to within the organization, right? Um, there's a whole range from, from contractors to employees to, to vendors to partners, and they all need the right access to things in your environment, right? right. And as we already noted before, even on the previous diagram, we had all the, the bots and the other things. Um, it's, it's amazingly complex, and so what you want to do is make sure they have the right access at the right time to the right person, right? And, and one thing to point out here as well, Mike, it's, it's not only that you have different people that need access, they need access to multiple different things, mm -hmm. right? So your employees need access to your HR system and maybe your mainframe and maybe SaaS applications. And your suppliers maybe just need access to SaaS applications and apps. And so you get this, this, big, this nice mesh of different things and access that people need. And so, yeah, you can look at this and go, man, this is, this is crazy. This is complex. How in the world can I manage all this? And, and this is why, uh, you know, access management products have long been popular, right? Everyone understands the issue. Everyone understands the use case. It's, it's decently rapid to install. I used to do this for a living, right? Architect it for customers internationally. Right. And no one said, well, I don't want that. Um, and then, you know, the evolution of single sign-on via the web and that type of thing led to widespread adoption. And so those of you on the call, already know this, right? Yeah. The table stakes for you guys. But access, you know, is just one part of, of what we're talking about. Because remember our original breach story, it wasn't just that he had access, but it was what he was doing with that access and whether that access was appropriate. Or Correct. Not. Absolutely. And so that's where, um, you know, the, the power of identity comes in, right? Um, the ability to enable efficient access without compromising security and compliance, right? So basically understanding your identity within the organization and what they should have access to, what they shouldn't have access to. Um, knowing what the policies are for your organization to say, okay, um, you know, my, my payroll specialist shouldn't be able to uh, cut checks and also process checks, right? Um, so there's, there's checks and balances there and knowing your identity and who has access to what and how long they've had that access and managing that really adds that extra benefit to your access management because you're stopping them at the front door and saying, no, you can't have access to that, but you're also monitoring that access on, on a, a daily or quarterly basis, understanding what they have access and how they got it. Right, and so, you know, what we're saying, obviously, as you see, is, is that identity is, is more, is a more further step than just providing access. And so um, what's helpful is to break down um, what identity actually is. And we're going to try and provide a framework for you. And what we like to say is, on the podcast and other places is, you know, it's what you've already been hearing. You know, in terms of identity governance, we're seeking to know who has access, how is it being used, is it appropriate, and then we're going to make that into a cycle of making sure all those questions are answered appropriately. Absolutely. And as David said, uh, I think you kind of hinted at this earlier, uh, David, some of these concepts with identity governance. Yeah. Um, so with this, right, understanding who has access to what and how they got that access, right, your, your key point here is mitigation, right? So you want to minimize the risk associated with entitlement creep, orphan account, separation duty policies, um, even other ones of, as far as uh, which one is a good one is the lever, right? Somebody leaves your organization, right, and 
it takes a while to decommission their accounts. And so all that access is just sitting there, that account is sitting there available. You want to minimize the risk associated with that. And so that's where your governance comes in. Entitlement creep is another one. This is the classic, um, you know, Joe's been here for 20 years, right? He was employee number five. Oh, Joe. And he's got access to everything, right? Over the course of 20 years, he moved over here, he's working on this project, he's working on this project. And then what makes that entitlement creep even worse is that as people come onto the organization, they go, oh, well, just give them what Joe has, right? And so brand, brand new employee 20 years later starts the company, has access to everything in the system because they said, okay, just give them what Joe has, right? And that, that's the things that we want to minute, what we want to mitigate because as breaches happen, because they are going to happen, let's, let's just all be very clear about that. <clears throat> the, if we can shrink that attack vector of what they can get access to, right? So if, if I break into that organization system and I say, okay, well, I get Joe's account, I have access to everything. But if I'm using governance to, to minimize that entitlement creep, so my new person that comes in doesn't have all of Joe's access, maybe just some, maybe just that, okay, so I get one account, but I don't have access to everything, right? Maybe I get to a database or an application, but I don't get to everything. Yeah. And it's all about just kind of, to, you know, mitigating and minimizing that risk and the impact that you're going to hit. Right, and a lot of times you'll hear, um, and you guys are probably familiar with this term as well, but the concept of least privilege. Basically, you should only have access and able, an ability to do a minimum of what you need to do to get your job done. Uh, and so let's, instead of uh, speaking in a little more abstract concepts, let's break it down a little bit, because sometimes it's helpful to have a, uh, a kind of use case or, or an example. And so well, let's, take, uh, let's take Phil. Phil, Phil? We're going to call him right. Phil today. Phil the sales rep. And so Phil comes into a company and he needs access to stuff to do his job as a sales rep, right? He needs access to Salesforce. He needs access to his commissioning tools so he knows how he's going to get paid, when he's going to get paid. And then, of course, he'll need some type of, uh, you know, HR system or, or something else to do his benefits and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, with access management, it's great. You can set that up. He has access to all those things. And it seems like you're off and running, but there's another level. Yep. <clears throat> so there's a deeper level underneath that, right, as we start to kind of play this out. So he has access to Salesforce, but Phil is in the Americas region. So we should make sure that he doesn't have access to Salesforce for the MIA region or the APAC region. Going down even a step further, in America, he's in the U.S. West region. So he shouldn't have access to Central and U.S. East. And so what you start to see here is there's deeper levels down under the access that you need to govern, right? Going over to the homegrown commissioning tool, right? Again, he can't calculate his commissions, but he should be able to view his commissions, and he definitely should not be able to prove his commissions, right? Because, you know, Phil's going to go in, and if he can do all three of those, you know, it's going to be a good it's going to be a good quarter for him every quarter, right? Because I can tell you, if I can calculate and improve my own commissions, yeah. <laughs> and, and then the third one on the, the HR side, the people stuff, right? Be able to view his personal pay stuff, view benefits, but again, not able to process commissions to payroll, <laughs> right? Again, pay. right? Exactly. We we want Phil to to earn his commissions uh, the 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 good way with hard work and, and good salesmanship. So what this is really illustrating, again, is that under underneath the access, right, there are a lot of underlying complex entitlements and things that you need to mitigate and make sure that you are um, enforcing these policy and making sure, again, least privileged access. And this is why we're calling it identity governance. Exactly. It's not just identity, right? Access management is managing access, but we're going to govern it. So we're going to understand what the business use cases are and how the business operates and as a result, uh, comply with anything that needs to be complied with, either on a regulation basis or anything else. And by doing that, that's where the value really comes in, in terms of avoiding being breached and reducing how people can attack, is because you know where things are valuable. Anything from uh, data about customers and flat files to, to data and applications in Salesforce. Yeah. Protecting all of it and making sure only uh, people who need to be able to modify it or view it can do so in a business context. <clears throat> right. And the the next step after this, right, and we kind of touched about it earlier, right, was, as I was bringing up Joe, who's been in the organization for 20 years, you also get a chance to manage the life cycle of an identity, right? Um, so it, there's these three classic use cases, join or move or leader, right? You got a, a new person comes to the organization or you move within the organization, you get a promotion, you transfer to another um, or, or you know, the lever, right? You decided to, to leave the company. All of these um, trigger points cause you to, to want to gain access, right? 
So it's a trigger point for gaining new access. And we want to make sure that that's being governed as that life cycle happens. Because again, we don't want that entitlement creep of, you know, the Joe scenario to where, hey, I joined the account and then I just keep getting more access, more access as I move. And then as I get ready um, to leave, like I still have all that access. So we want to make sure that we're governing all of that and um, managing throughout that life cycle and making sure that that access is, is controlled. Oh, for sure. One customer I which will not be named. Uh, <laughs> I was putting in access management and identity governance, the combination we're talking about today being powerful, and uh, we ran some audit reports, and we found out that one low-level clerk in this regional office somehow had obtained access to see everyone's tax return in the entire country. That's, so wow, okay. he, he didn't know it, thank goodness, as far as we know. <laughs> It was, a, it was an eye-opening experience uh, for, for them and for me. So, that's, I mean, it's an example of how, you know, over time this access, and it, the reason he had that was because of some of the several job changes that allowed him to accrue this weird combination. But exactly. that's what governance gives you. And it, as, even as the person moves through the organization, we maintain that, that integrity. Yep. And, um, you know, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about identity being at the center here. Identity, governance, providing that context and being able to do all this governance that we're talk, discussing and talking about from a central, consistent location. Because a lot of times what you'll find are, are these uh, application owners and others trying to do this in isolated instances. Because application owners and data owners are concerned about their data, as they should be. And so what we're doing is we're doing this consistently from a centralized uh, point of view and extending that policy across everything. Uh, across things that are on-premises, things that are in the cloud, like I said before, data that's, that's in an application and data that someone has downloaded to a file, heaven forbid, and put up on Dropbox. Um, governing all of that via identity, finding out who they are, what access you should have to that data, that application, and enforcing rules and governance on top of that. Right. So overall, what we're saying is integrated together, identity governance and access management give you a very, very powerful solution, right? And we've partnered uh, specifically with some access management vendors, Opta, Microsoft, VMware, um, to allow organizations to have efficient, secure, and compliant access, right? Automate the on and offboarding, ensuring the access appropriate lifecycle, and then, of course, the policies, right? Authorization policies enforced and user activity is secure and compliant, right? So when these two come together, you get you get your front door, right? And, and what I like to use the analogy of, right, your, your corporate network is, is the biggest party, right? It's, it's, it's the huge party, it's the event of the year, right? And everybody wants to get in. Everybody's trying to get um, into your network because they want to come to this party. And your access management is your bouncer, right? It's your it's your seven foot, you know, 300 pound bouncer. Wow. Who, you know, it's the mountain from Game of Thrones. Right? Yeah, it's the mountain, right? <laughs> right. Um, and and, and there, he's there to make sure that nobody gets in that's not supposed to be in. And that's absolutely needed. He right? is you need the your door. Bouncer. He's not guarding it. Exactly. Yeah. He is the door, right? <clears throat> but you also need your governance side of how those tickets get created, right? And so that's how I look at it when you look at that analogy is the governance is going to go through all the process to make sure you get your ticket. So if you've ever tried to, you know, go to like a, a huge event, right, and it's like, oh, this is going to be the party of the year, right? First you got to go to get the ticket. you got to call, you got to get on the list, and then you got to go find it and pay, and then once you pay, then you get the ticket, then you stand in line, then you finally get to the bouncer, the bouncer looks at the ticket and goes, okay, cool, you can get it, right? And that's what access management does is it sits there and says, okay, you have the right ticket, let's let you get in. Governance comes underneath that and says, I'm going to make sure you have the right entitlements on that ticket. So once you get into the party, you can go to the VIP section because you got that entitlement, but you can't go over to the super VIP section because you didn't quite get that entitlement, right? So you can pop champagne bottles, but you can't pop Ace of Spades bottles. So, you know, however you want to do it. Um, but the point is, you want to make sure that you're managing um, that access accordingly. So you have your bouncer, you have your governance, and together, You've got the greatest party ever invented. It's awesome. Note to self, party with David next weekend instead of with David <laughs> past weekend. Um, yeah, no, that's a great point. And, you know, that's what we're talking about, that combination together. And, you know, there's always a good time during the course of your busy day on a Tuesday or whenever you're listening to this right. um, to really contemplate your life. Yeah. Right, David, you can't just go willy-nilly, pell-mell, use whatever analogy you want. No. Um, and you kind of have to... Think about where you are as an organization. So if you're considering, you know, going from your access management program and extending it and and providing that powerfully integrated duo with identity governance, then there's some questions you want to ask yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You can see this here. You know, do you, do you have visibility 
into every identity, every system, every application in your organization, for example, and know what they have access to. And that's kind of a baseline table state almost. Right, yeah. And um, these, you know, these are questions that, you know, I ask myself every morning when I wake up because I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> um, and, I, and I have my time, you know, to, to ponder because you, you always take five minutes in the morning and just kind of, right. you know, really reflect and get some deep thought. So you should ask yourself this. It's like, do my employees get only the right access for the right resources at the right time? You know, do I have employees? I mean, that's the do, yeah, do, right? do I have employees, right? Can I flag suspicious activity and alert the appropriate administrators? Now, again, like, as you're answering these questions, don't freak out. If, if the answer to all these are no, um, it's okay. Right. We, we, we can help you get there, but the, definitely you should, you know, as you're sipping your morning tea, you know, maybe having some oatmeal, you just you ask yourself right. the questions. That sounds like a relaxing, relaxing morning to me. It, no, but it, it's so important to, to assess what you have so that you know what you could have, yeah. you know, where you're going. Because this is, this is really, it's better to consider these questions, as David refers to, over your morning coffee and reading the paper in a relaxed manner than seeing your own organization's name in the headline as you read the coffee. And that's, that's kind of, kind of your, your choices here. Because, you know, once we have that integrated governance and access management, that's kind of what we're doing. We're, we're automating uh, the governance of identity, you know, from that join or move or lever and making sure all of our policies are in place so that people are not misusing uh, the access and they have the right access. And then we're, as a result, that enhances our security stance. It lowers our risk. Um, it keeps that attack surface I was talking about uh, as low as possible. Um, and we do that through, you know, use of policy so it's reusable and it's uniform. And there aren't these special flowers of access and identity, they're sitting off by themselves, which exactly. is what people wind up having a lot of times, so that's one of the danger points. Yep. So it really benefits you to have these these three together and integrated. Yeah, and it, it, it gets you towards creating a full identity and access management solution, right? So as you all know, it's, it's a process, it's a journey, right? And, you know, the goal that we want you to have is to see everything, govern everything, empower everyone, right? I mean, it's a great slogan. It's catchy. Those are great terms. It's not going to happen overnight. That's fine. But as you continue to build and grow out your program, you start to get these things, right? And that's really what we wanted to, to kind of really get home today is that, you know, the two of these things together, access management and governance, like really start to build your, your solid IAM solution and making sure you have what you need so when you answer those questions in the morning, right, it's not a panic question. You're not going, oh, crap, I don't know any of this. You're going, yep, I'm good. And you sip your coffee and your, your oatmeal and you head into work with a the nice calm and zen about you. We'll talk about you sipping oatmeal in a minute, but, um, and this moves you from being reactive to proactive, right? Moves you from being reactive to, I want to stay out of the headlines, I want to minimize my risk, to that last one right there, that empowering everyone. Yes. We didn't really dwell on it, but that's what this does. It means that the minute the person walks in the door, they have the right access. They can do their job and benefit the business rather than calling the help desk. Yep. Five times in a row. Yeah, I like my little soupy, so what? Whatever. <laughs> With a straw or three. <laughs> um, and just to highlight, if you want to find out more, um, there are a couple ways you can do that. Um, one of them is that we have a Navigate conference coming up. Yep, absolutely. Um, it is the uh, premier identity governance conference in the world. Um, I'm only saying that because they pay me to. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of fun, and you get to come and, and hear a lot about this um, you know, hands-on with some of the um, the best identity governance experts in the world. Um, also, you get to come to Austin or Sydney or Barcelona. I would recommend you come to Austin um, just because it's Austin and it's cool. But um, with that, like I said, you really get a chance to um, learn a lot about governance and what it means and, and how you can apply identity uh, within your organization. So, and you get to come hang out with me and Mike, which, I mean, that right there, that tops it. I don't even know. Speaking of a party with bouncer and champagne. Exactly. Like right now. Right now. So uh, you should be clicking on this link right now and registering uh, because it's it's just going to be awesome. And if in the more immediate, you know, if you're if you heard us talk today and you're like, wow, that that's definitely something I need tomorrow before I sip my coffee. Um, feel free to to call uh, our experts and or to email in, and we'll be happy to. Uh, you know, answer the questions you have and to just continue discussion of, of what potential identity and identity governance has for your organization. Absolutely. So I think that's, uh, 
That's what we had to say, but we're open yeah. up for questions. Thanks. Thanks, David, Mike. Awesome. Um, yeah, now we're going to open it up for questions. So just a reminder, if you have a question, go ahead and submit that in the Q&A panel, and um, we'll get to a few starting right now. Let's jump on in. Um, first question, um, what additional integration is required for such a combined access management identity governance solution? Um, well, there's a, there's a couple of different ways to go about it. Um, usually, a lot of these um, products can coexist, right? So the access management products are already in place, um, and we can coexist you know, with our governance solution um, together without any integration. Uh, so depending on what you're going after, um, you can kind of coexist. Also, um, a lot of the times, uh, most of this access is bridged through some kind of directory, so Active Directory or LDAP or any kind of enterprise directory, and so we can kind of share that information through there. Um, and then specifically with some of our partners that we have, we've created um, integrations directly into those products um, to, allow, to allow you to take advantage of some of this. So I would say uh, you have a, a different flavors, which is always good. That means you have options, right, depending on how your organization is set up. You can go from just a coexistence to using an Active Directory or Enterprise Directory in the beginning to utilizing one of our integration methods that we have with our partners. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, next question. Will I need additional identity resources for implementing a governance solution with my access management? Well, that's a good question. Um, originally, you know, when people look at, at adopting and, and implementing identity, they sometimes uh, think about it too deeply. What I mean is, you know, you can use your original staff and your original team and your original program uh, to start down the path of identity, and you can do quite a bit. As, as David already mentioned, you know, we're going to be using common elements such as identity repositories that you already know about. So the staff and your team can, can definitely roadmap out and do some initial phases. Um, long term, yeah, you'd want to expand into a, a, probably a, a more of a dedicated team uh, with someone who's responsible for managing uh, the project and, and the program at large. And to help you down the path, we've had a lot of customers actually recently who have come up to us and were just people in the industry and, and, and enterprises coming up and saying, you know, I want to implement identity. Here's what I have, but I don't I have no idea even where to start or how to progress. And right. um, we're working on uh, some material for that, and we have a, a blog series up on the SailPoint blog and it kind of takes you through some of those phases to help you map out that journey so you don't feel like you're doing it as a one-off. And that's also another reason to come to Navigate, is you hear story after story of this is how we did it, this is how we phased in, this is how we showed quick return on investment, and this is why we've advanced in, in our program long term. Great. Thank you, Mike. Okay, that about wraps it up for the time that we have for questions today. Um, everyone keep an eye out for an email from us tomorrow. That will include a recording of today's presentation. Um, we'll also include a complimentary solution brief in case you want to dive deeper into what we talked about today. And if you'd like to learn more, go contact us and schedule a demo on our website, and we'll be happy to get you in touch with an identity governance expert. Um, Mike, David, thanks for your time today. Thanks for everyone who joined us, and have a great rest of your day.